Well, you might be aware that NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers was recently in the news for going on something called a darkness retreat, where he intentionally spent four days alone in this partially underground hobbit-like structure with 300 square feet of space completely devoid of light. Which, as a Bears fan, sounds a little bit like Lambeau Field and Green Bay to me, but I guess that's not really the point. Rogers actually said in an interview prior to his time away that much of the focus of a retreat like this is for sensory deprivation, to give time and space to wrap your head around the silence and to deal with your own thoughts. And whether you're trying to decide the future of your NFL career like Rogers is, or if you're just an average person like me, you might see how the idea of taking intentional time and space away in silence without distractions can be beneficial to you. But it's also something that I think is pretty foreign to us in our culture and in our everyday routines. And that's why today we're going to spend some time just for a few minutes talking about the important rhythm of solitude and silence. Now, my guess is that many, if not most of us, feel some level of being overwhelmed in our lives. Like we're running 100 miles an hour in life, spinning so many different plates, and we never have the time or the space to catch up. Or maybe we even feel disconnected from our purpose, from relationships, maybe even from God himself. You see, the reality is that we live in a fast-paced, distracted world where our default mode is to add more and more things to our lives, where we celebrate busyness and accomplishments, and where we embrace distraction, including perhaps the ultimate distraction, the one that lives right here in our pockets, in order to, to, do, to not have to do this very thing, spend time in solitude and silence. In fact, nearly a century ago, pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer put it like this. He said, we are so afraid of silence that we chase ourselves from one event to the next in order to not have to spend a moment alone with ourselves. I don't know about you, but that's something I really resonate with in my life. My guess is you probably can as well. But is that okay? Is that good for us? Is it good for our lives and for our health? Or maybe even more importantly, is that good for our souls? Well, if you look at the trends in our culture, I would say the most simple answer would probably be no. Most Americans say that they feel too busy to enjoy life. We see mental health concerns continue to skyrocket around the world, and we see that technology has made work and school more demanding. And we rarely, if ever, create the margin to remove distractions from our lives in order to spend intentional, meaningful time simply just to be. And when it comes to following Jesus, this is an incredibly important rhythm for all of us to learn. Because when you look at the life and the ministry of Jesus, this is something that we see him model time and time again. Notice what Mark writes in the chapter 1, verse 35 of his gospel account. He says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. See, I think sometimes it's common for us to think that Jesus kind of had this chill, slow life, that he was just kind of some sandal-wearing, miracle-performing guy, just kind of going from thing to thing as he pleased. But that's actually not the case at all. Jesus was often on the move. He had no shortage of things to do. In fact, right before the verse I just read, we see that Jesus had been healing people and the crowds were gathering, asking for more. But yet we see he's still intentionally focused on getting away from all of that in order to be in solitude, to be with God. And as challenging as that might be for us in our culture, I think it's something that you and I desperately need as well, to intentionally schedule uninterrupted time in a distraction-free environment, to be alone with and to experience God, to have the time and the space to quiet the noise of our lives and simply sit with Jesus, to grow closer to him, to have a more intimate and abounding relationship with him. My daughter Raylan is two and a half years old, and let me tell you, she is a blast. She always wants to be doing something fun. She loves going on adventures to get smoothies. She loves looking in the sky for airplanes. She loves playing kitchen in her playroom all the time. And as much as I like doing things with her and for her, when I look back at the first couple years of being her dad, I think that some of my favorite times have simply just been when we have spent time together on the front porch. We did this pretty often, especially when she was younger. We'd just go outside without an agenda, without really much to do, and we would just sit together on the chair on the porch, just be together. And I think what I feel in those moments as her dad is a similar picture to what God feels with us when we practice the rhythm of solitude. We're so accustomed to creating rules and regulations, to feeling like we need to do something, and feeling anxious that we're not doing the right thing, maybe, when instead, 
All Jesus wants to do is invite us to sit with him on the porch, to intentionally set aside time where we can get away from distractions and routines to simply be with him. And I'll be honest with you, when life gets busy and crazy, creating this time can often be one of the first things that slip from my life. And so unless you're planning to go on a darkness retreat sometime soon, and if you do, please let me know. I just want to leave you today with a few simple ideas of how you can intentionally be with Jesus in this way as we seek to follow him. First, if you're maybe just starting out newer to faith, I think a really great starting point could be to download the One Minute Pause app on your phone. This is a simple app that just gives you reminders in a simple way to pause and connect with God in the midst of your busy day. A second idea might be simple, but just put your phone away. I know that sounds simple, but it also maybe sounds kind of impossible. I know I feel that for sure. But we're so conditioned to have our phones with us 24-7 that they're such an easy distraction. So maybe try to simply just put your phone in another room for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, and spend time in silence and in God's word. And my third idea would be just to find a place where you can get away for a couple of hours or maybe even half a day. I'd encourage you to bring your Bible and your journal, but really try to come into that time without an agenda or certain expectations. You might have a deeply impactful and spiritually enlightening time with Jesus, or maybe you won't feel anything significant or different at all. In either case, remember that the goal is simply just to intentionally put yourself in a position to be less distracted by everything else and more focused on Jesus. And in all of this, as we seek to follow Jesus together in this way, remember, no matter where you are, no matter where you start or how good you are at solitude, Jesus is for you and he longs to be with you.